Okay, we are live. Good evening. Let me know if you can hear me and we'll be starting very, very soon. Alright, I was just gonna go ahead and get started. Any point, if you guys have anything to say, I want to make this a very sort of casual experience. So, if you guys want to talk about anything, have any questions, anything like that, feel free to just put in the chat and、uh, I will be able to you know, kind of talk to you and stuff. This is a public. Live stream, so feel free to invite anybody over while I'm painting. Alright, l so good to see you, Pauli Frederick. Hi, Artist Y. And、um, I'm gonna get started. So, this is actually a screenshot of a game that I was recently playing. It's called Forza Horizon 4. And I think it's. We're kind of at the day of age that a video game graphic is getting so real. And I just thought that we can actually just really get to. We can just really use it as a, as a reference to, to paint, which is excellent. Now, before we start, I, am, I think I'm actually going to kind of crop this image a little bit. Just to make this image, I think it's a little bit better for painting. Let me see if I can do that real quick because I don't want to spend a lot of time going over that. I kind of want to get straight to drawing as much as I can. t As much as I can, I mean. Alright, so top, let me crop about. All right. Okay, so yeah, I think this is after cropping, this is a little better composition. I crop away some of the stuff that's not really necessary to be there. And、uh, let me see if I can. I want to trim off the right just a little bit more. All right. Okay, so compared to what we had before, this is a lot better. Alright. Okay, so let's just get started. I don't want to keep you guys for too long, and、uh, it is 9 p.m. here. I just put my kids down. So let's just get started. Hi, Dario. So. This, this screenshot is actually.、Um, so, Forza Horizon, they take place in Edinburgh, Scotland. So, I saw that it's a really beautiful place. I've never been there myself, but I did visit there in video games, so, which is funny. But, anyways, I think I'm just going to get started. So, we have this scenery that has a really nice lighting going on. So, I'm just going to start doing this. Now, this is actually not, not that much different from, from anything from, from anything else. So, let me. This is, yeah, so this is not any different from painting from a photograph or anything like that. So, I'm still going to just try and do block out. Like a big shape here. So we have our building here, and we got another building here. So something like that. Just very light, very loosely block out the shape that I want. And the buildings on the right, let's just go in, go off the frame here like that. Yeah, I think that will be great. All right, 3 p.m. Sunday, Australia. Wonderful. Thank you for tuning in all the way from California. 
11 p.m. Colombia. Okay, I hope I won't take make it too long, so you can still actually try to finish it. If not, um, I will keep this in YouTube. Okay, so let's let's say the vanishing point is about here. So everything else will just kind of follow through that. Okay, so so as complex as this building looks let's just start off with some basic primitives such as a maybe like a box so so this is gonna go down like that and, uh, here's like buildings in the back there's a little roof here and uh, there's some nice tall structure on top then we are going to put that in. A roof here. Another structure. The roof. Have this decoration here, structure here, and then we'll just go to the side here now I'm not going to do everything I'm not going to paint draw everything in the very detail I think just to have a nice silhouette I think that's all we really need there's a little antenna going on here we'll definitely try to put that in there's some interesting detail right there okay hi Jasmine Good to see you. All right. And so I think the important thing here is this shadow cutting across. The sun is on the right of the frame. So as this building here is catching the shadow, is casting the shadow down there. Hi Kate, 32 people here, wonderful, okay, this shadow cutting across down, I'm making the shadow a little bit longer than it appears to be in the, I'm not gonna say photo, I almost say photo, this is not a photo, this is a game screenshot capture, what's the difference though, it's like digital photo, digital image. And I'm pretty sure the company that makes the game go to the real location, doing a lot of photo scan and doing a lot of research there. Good morning, Nina. Where are you now? Is morning there? This little structure here. Okay, we got like a nice structure going on. Stuff coming up here like that. You notice that my drawing is pretty loose. I'm not going to do a very detailed archite architectural drawing. This is not what it's about. So I really just want to get the essence of this. So, will be nice, isn't it? I want to visit Europe for the longest time. I just never been there. And I know it's kind of like a blasphemy for an artist never been to Europe. But um, it is what it is. My kids are still a little bit too young to appreciate of the, all, of, all of that beautiful stuff and culture and stuff plus it's pretty expensive to take five people there <laughs> so putting us some savings there and eventually I'll be there and uh, hopefully it will be like any other watercolor master I get to give some workshop there that will be excellent 
But for now, I'll settle for a digital virtual visit with video game and Google and taking reference from taking photo reference from my students. Amelia, one of our students, sent me quite a bit of photos from Portugal. It's very, very beautiful there. And of course, I got some students like Miyuki and, and many other students. They visiting Europe and they took some nice photo there. Very, very nice photo. And it always make me want to visit the place more. First will be Taiwan. I visit Taiwan quite often. Is where I'm from, so it's not that difficult for me to visit there. I do get. We, I do have family there, so it'll be easier. Okay, so this is a little bit tricky because this building have a little bit of angle there, so it's not a direct box per se the corner is a little bit shapered off so I mean before I got caught up into all the crazy details I'm just going to lo loosely sketch that and uh, so there are certain things I'm going to change and uh, one of one of it is definitely that I am you might hear the rain. It's raining pretty hard today in Seattle, so hopefully it won't get too distracting. I find it relaxing actually and it's nice. Hi Asthma. As yeah, Asthma. Maria. Two thousand year old temples. Yeah. I mean, travel the world is definitely my my end goal. Taking my wife, travel the world. All right, so I'm at a pretty good place right now. Let me zoom it out just a little bit more. We got some umbrellas here, and I think those are very, very good. This kind of, they kind of pop out in front of the shadow so I will definitely put some of those in now I'm not gonna put that sign coffee house that you know that, that doesn't even exist uh, what usually happen is when you're making a video game they usually avoid using like a real known store like Starbucks or something right because copyright issues if they do put Starbucks or something they need to pay Starbucks to to be there so they usually make up some some random coffee house name, make up some logo, make up some brand. That that happens a lot in a video game. So, and I'm not gonna put it there because that that big sign is is kind of ugly. I don't I don't really want that. So some umbrellas here, and uh, let's put. Even though there's no car here, I'm thinking to put some car. I think that might make this interesting. And I also want like a shadow coming coming across here. So, so there might be a shadow coming from here. So maybe they imagine there might be another building here and it's casting a long shadow across across the whole page here. So that give us a little bit of foreground setting here. And uh, so I don't know if I want to put car just yet. Maybe not yet. Okay. Oh, I just noticed something. So like if the if the vanishing point is here, that means the figure is about this tall right here. That means this umbrella is way too short. Okay, a little bit taller. I mean, they are, they, these umbrellas are for seated people. So, 
I don't need to raise them so high, but it definitely needs to be a little bit higher. So good that I've spot that while I'm still on the still on the strong stage. Thank you, Ar Arna. Sorry, I'm bad with names, so if I mispronounce your name, I apologize. But thank you, Arna. So two umbrella here. I think those will be great. And um, yeah, let's let's have a figure here and another figure here. I will reference the figure from the screenshot actually, at least a gesture of it. So he's kind of standing here talking to this person and uh, we have some figure a little bit further away so they're smaller. Notice the head is around the same place, okay? That's when you're at the eye level, everyone's head is about the same height. They might be kids, they might be some people a little bit taller than you, but they are mostly on the same height. Okay. So in this case, you don't want to figure all of a sudden head is like here. Okay, that's something I always repeating and telling my student. That's the basic perspective of a cityscape. If you want to paint a lot of figures, those should be. So I think I'm gonna put one of the umbrellas here. Should I? I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so maybe about this tall here. Okay, so a little bit of umbrella here, maybe another one off the f after frame here. So two figures here. And, uh, so I'll paint some more figures with just brush stroke and stuff. Okay. Now I've been thinking if I want to have a car here. I'm not quite sure. But if I'll have a car here, maybe I'll just have it a little bit kind of off the foreground here. So, yeah, so I have one car here. Should I have that here? I'm kind of making a decision here, so. I put like a car here. It would be kind of odd, but at the same time, it's, you know, I'm not, I don't even know where this is. So maybe we can have a little bit of car going on, mixing with the figures. I think that's not that big of a deal. Let's just kind of temporarily put something there. And I think most of it is going to be in the shadows anyways. So... Maybe like a car here. All right. I'm still kind of deciding whether I should do it or not. But for now. Okay. I think those umbrellas are nice. I will. I might have a few tables or something like that and some chairs. Maybe like a figure sitting here or something. I'm just kind of doodling right now. Seemed like a very complex painting, isn't it? I hope I can simplify it enough. Okay, yeah, let me not put a card there because that will be very distracting and not looking good.
leg of the desk, uh, table, chairs, whatever. Okay. All right, let's just get start painting and uh, we'll see what happened. So let me grab the clean water. Maybe bicycle is maybe I'm, I'm not quite sure. We'll see. All right, so. Actually, I'm not going to use something this big. I'll probably use a little bit smaller brush. Number fourteen here. Nice blue sky. I don't intend to do clouds, so. A nice blue will do, so. Um, maybe I can do a little bit of cloud. Yeah, I'll probably do a little bit. Just a little bit of cloud. And when I say cloud, it's more like I'm breaking up some of the shape here. Going spontaneous, kind of random, and uh, some blue sky, some clouds. So. Cloud is not in the screenshot, but I just thought it might be fun. I think that's, that's good. And uh, let me just continue that blue sky down. Um, what, I haven't painted yet. What do you mean too strong? You mean the screenshot or in my painting? I haven't painted anything yet. Building is pretty warm. It's got this kind of warm uh, brick and stuff. So I'm gonna try to do that. All right, let's paint some light. So I do it there. I'm painting. I'm just painting light right now. So let's just paint some light. This can. Yeah, it's very um yeah, it's very dark, but it's a good reference. I can reference that to group my image quite nicely. Okay. Needs a little bit of red. It's a little bit too yellow. Let's paint some light. This is the light on the building. Can leave a little bit of light here and there, but We just rapidly filling the light here. Look at that. 
nice, beautiful, warm color. I like the sky. Thank you. Peaceful mood. <laughs> yeah. I hope it's peaceful. I like Seattle when I paint and it rains. It's just a very enjoyable time here. And uh, hopefully all my kids are nice and sleep sleep very soundly. I'll get that. Nice, some nice light. I'm gonna spray a little bit of water pretty far away. Let that mist kind of flow on top of the wash. Keep it alive a little bit longer and I can play with it just a little bit. And I think... Well, the building is not a flat stuff. The building is not a flat surface. Well, not like not flat surface. It's not com it's not like a stucco. It has bricks, has textures. So I'm going to just put some stuff here. I'm gonna disturb it a little bit. Add some textures while it's still wet. You know, give it some texture. Nice stuff going on. And now let's actually. Give it some nice dark soft detail while it is still wet. We'll see what happens. Oh, too much water. Too much water. It explode. We just need a little bit. Yep, that's more about it. Not too wet. Oh just you know very dry mixture and with the tip of your brush you kinda Give it a little bit of soft detail, stuff like that. Just a little soft detail, those are wonderful. Uh, some more stuff here. to continue A bit darker down here underneath the umbrella here I do want to try to leave a little bit of uh, Highlight and stuff. I try to keep it loose though. It's not you know, I don't want to stress over it then Kind of like so and uh, Maybe I will have a car here Just to kind of break up All these shapes Splatter some water on it. Okay, I think this is good. A little bit of clean water, and I'm just going to soften this overall. Edge kind of dry, but I think it should be okay. Alright. 
And remember this wash, we are just painting the light. Okay, the light and atmosphere. That's what we're painting right now, mostly. Okay. Don't try to desperately define anything in the first wash. Just get that light in and uh, we can always worry about what those are a little bit later. Okay, so a little bit cooler here. I don't need to leave that much highlight here. Just a few here and here and there will be good. Anybody been to been to Edinburgh? I'm just curious. It'd be cool if you actually been there, like physically. Oh, wonderful. I think it's really cool to, to actually visit there. I mean, I search Google and uh, image and stuff and I'm looking at Google map and stuff and I think um, they do a pretty good job replicating the place, but uh, of course, nothing beats the real thing here. So, okay, just gonna fill that in. I'm leaving some highlight and stuff on on purpose. Some fast stroke will give you some incidental highlights and little speckles of details, and those are always magical and great. Stuff as well. Uh, one stroke here, and then one here. What a mess I'm making. I am making a huge mess, isn't it? I'm. It's always this stage. The first wash is kind of. It always challenges me to to have faith and uh, just to keep going. So you never know how it's gonna turn out, and just keep it going. Do your best and hopefully best and uh, hopefully watercolor will give you a nice decent painting. I would definitely visit there one day. I would definitely visit Edinburgh one day and uh, sing this. So wonderful that you guys are there in person. Nothing beats the place. I mean, nothing beats the real visit there. I mean, a lot of things are definitely not going to feel the same. Um, if you are able to visit a place in person, that's always the best. To be able to experience the place with your own eyes and just kind of register everything with all of your senses, the sound, the smell, and everything. It's wonderful. Huge fly flying over. 
All right, I'll try not to let it bother me, but I don't know how to get in, like at all. So, we'll see. Okay. Same thing here. I will just soften this no, without leaving it horrible edge here. So the ground, let's make it a little bit warmer here. And now onto the foreground, a little bit darker, a little bit cooler. All right, there goes our long first wash. But pause, take a screenshot. What color is that on the row? Like in my painting or in the in the in the image? If you're talking about in my painting, it's just a mixture of bunch of colors. I don't even know. Um, a little bit of burn umber, a little bit of burnt sienna, uh, yellow ochre, cobalt blue, just a bunch of this color mixing to some sort of gray. And if I want to make it warmer, I add some of the warm color. If I want it to be cooler, I add some of the cool color. Simple as that, I'm not really I don't I can't really give you a formula because I don't really paint like that. So Okay. I do think most of it is dried enough for me to, to start working. So I'll be start working on the building a little bit tighter. Cause right now as much as there's some definition going on what I'm really doing is just painting the light. We want some nice, like, warms on this. I haven't even painted the roof yet. And I want a little bit of those warm glows on those buildings. So this is the part that I'm actually going to start to define things a little bit. Where's that gigantic fly? I'm just super paranoid right now, but we'll see. Let's hope it, it's not going to come back and bite me or anything. All right. So, so the roof is sort of a gray color, but because of the sun, it's a little bit warm. So some sort of a warm gray here, right? So like a little bit burn umber a little bit see this is really warm so i want to cool it off i just add a little bit blue and now it's cooled off it's just simple as that right so it's not it's not a lot of trick and formula to what i mix mix color with your eyes trust your eyes and if you cannot trust your eyes, then train your eyes to have a nice sense of color, able to tell what's warm, what's cool. I'm just gonna go from there. There's a roof there. And, uh, and there's some, it's actually another building here. I'm not sure if I wanna just you know what, just make it simple. I'm just make it I'm just gonna make this a continuous roof. I'm not gonna bother. Okay. And the roof continues here. And cutting across here. OK, 
Okay, 46 people right now. If you are here, you haven't say hi, please do so. I would love to know. I would love to know where you're from and uh, let's just kind of relax and have fun. Can talk about random nonsense and we all just have fun spending time. Let me actually zoom it in a little bit. Let me zoom it. Let me zoom it in, cause I will spend a little bit of time on painting this roof. So here, that you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so I'm gonna try to have a drier paint. I tend to have more wet mixtures. And lately, I'm trying to have a little bit more drier, dry brush and stuff. It's still very wet. I don't, I don't know what is it, what it is that I do. It just always end up quite wet. But um, okay. So just so you know, I am not going to paint everything that I see there. It's just, there are way too many details, right? If I want to paint all the details in the accuracy, like this game screenshot here, I might as well just go back to use a computer, right? So I don't think it's really not really that necessarily for me to do that. I'm just going to simply try to capture the essence of the place. Okay, a little bit of textures and stuff here. Keep it light. Okay, a bit. Hi, Kenneth. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying this. I enjoy doing this as well. So, yeah. No, I'm always loving to people to enjoy what I do and what I'm having fun doing this. A little bit drier brush and just kind of soften that. And, uh, a little bit details here. I have some antennas here. While they don't have that here in the screenshot, I'm just gonna put that in. So, a little bit drier and darker. So some. Oh yeah, I'll do this. Um, I'll definitely do this again. I enjoy doing this. I mean, this is actually an easier way for me to put out more content on my channel. I've been starting to do that because uh, once it's done, the YouTube will just save it. It saved me a lot of time from editing and stuff. It's just gonna be really long. So, uh, I don't know if most people enjoy like really long format video or do they usually prefer to just watch it for like 30 minutes and, and, and let it be so but this is definitely a lot easier for me to to do because I can I can just paint talk to you guys and I also like the interaction a lot more than just making a video and edit it and you guys get to watch it later after everything is done so this is kind of nice i get to talk to you guys and uh, share my process and get to know a little bit about you guys as well which is always 
fun to know. Okay, so I think I'm going to Okay. I really need to remind myself that I'm not going to get bogged down by by all the detail and stuff. So I'm really going to try to keep it as loose as I possibly can. So, I mean, I'll give it a little bit of definition and stuff. But I think for the rest of it, um, you know, something like this will do. See a little bit of shadows on the top because light coming down, casting a tiny bit of shadows on the edge of the window frame. And uh, got some dark inside the window. And I'm just going to do this. I'm not even going to separate this two. Okay. Kind of like doing a calligraphy here. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I, I, I never really know if people prefer one way or another. I mean, I'll try to do both. I'm actually in process of making another, um, another time lapse video. Uh, of uh, one of my recent painting of a girl looking out at the sea because that one uh, took me like four hours to finish so there's no way I can do that in live stream unless I break it into different sessions but I think um, this is for 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 things like this I think I can probably do live stream a little bit more Okay. A little bit dark, soft detail within the wet area. And, uh, okay. We really need to, yeah. There we go. I like some of the drier, the really dry brush here. So it really needs to be a lot drier. This gets pretty abstract, actually, but I think for this, I think it'll work. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you guys for joining me. Okay. To keep this part very loose by just kind of doing that. So I pre-wet the surface and I just kind of go in, do a few stripes, uh, do a few brush strokes and uh, some lost and found edges. Okay. All right, let's step back a little bit, see how it looks. Okay, I think it looks okay, but I definitely don't want to keep all work on it. I think it looks good as it is. If I do something more, I'm going to overwork it very quickly. So I'm going to move on to the right. And, So lizard and crimson, some ultramarine blue give us a little bit of this purple color, which is usually good for shadow in a sunny day. So there's some shadows here. Okay. 
try to make it a little bit straighter here. Otherwise, the building feels like it's kind of crooked and. Uh, Oh yeah, I'm, I do wet on wet, let the color blend on the paper quite often. I think that's the strength of watercolor, when it actually get to kind of paint itself for you. It's kind of watercolor on its best. do a drawing for this car I'm really just winging it right now let's hope it will work out because I have no idea if it will work out or not I'm just painting shape right now apparently yep, just winging it Here. Okay. Shadow. There's two people standing in the shadow, and uh, yeah. I'm seeing this car is casting. Some shadow too. I'm just going to paint that in right now. All right. Let's see. Let's. This is some. Oops. A little bit of windows back here we can just kind of fade it back in Bits and pieces on top of the roof. Here we have. A little darker stuff here. Okay. All right. Let's continue on. I'll, I'll really want to make this as fast as I can but it is a little bit tedious trying to do all the trying to do all the little things like little windows and stuff and that's one of the things that some people might prefer I do the time lapse because when I get here I'm just kind of repeating the steps so, I mean, you, you guys are feel free to, to, to go <laughs> take a nap and come back. I'm not going to blame you. But if you are here, regardless, we can just kind of relax and talk. Ask me anything. 
I will try to talk to you while I do. That also also kind of help me to make the process a little bit more fun as well. have another roof here okay oh I like that little sparkle here you see that those dry brush mark that just happens but they are wonderful give me some of this texture that I'm not able to just reproduce myself I will take out a little bit of that though. Okay, so a little bit of uh, some antenna and things like that. Sienna, I forgot which one is it. They look pretty similar. And to me, they are just warm color. Get that shape in there. Nice color. All right. Okay. So, suggest so a little bit detail here, but again, I am not going to reproduce all the crazy architectural detail here. That's just not possible, at least for this size and uh, for this. For this live stream, I'm not going to do all of that crazy stuff. Okay, so there's a little window here. Let me actually make it a little bit cooler. suggestion of some shadows going on and, uh, boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. There we have it, couple windows, right? Don't bog down on it too much. And, uh, it's a little bit of architectural detail here. Some ornate stuff. I'm just gonna describe it with a little change of tone and uh, that will do. too clean. I'm gonna try to 
splatter some stuff on it. And, uh... Okay, let's paint some more windows. We're almost done with windows. Uh, they are nice to look at, but such a pain to paint. It's just so many of them. And I'm not even painting them in like a very detailed fashion. I'm just trying to sort of hint them. go some windows okay that's, that's pretty much all all I need there okay. yeah do they look like window okay look like windows I'm, I'm good <laughs> all right okay okay some more One a little bit cooler toned here. And, uh... Okay, roof. We're almost done with these buildings. Alright. Need some warmth this part. Didn't paint it. bit of detail here there's a little window here I think I'm just gonna make make it with a soft shape here I think this that will that will look kind of nice okay. okay windows loosely defined and uh, all right, let's move on. Here comes the fun part. Okay, I'm gonna try to mix as much as possible. I'm gonna do the shadows that cut across. But I'll try to mix quite a bit of dark so that I don't have to keep going back and reload it. Let's do a test. Okay, let's make it a little bit cooler. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. How about this? Okay, close enough. And uh, let's just going to just going to go for it. Okay. Cannot hesitate too much when you do this, okay? The more you hesitate, the worse it's going to look, okay? No fear, no hesitation, just just go for it. You want a nice clean wash here, okay? You really want some nice clean, clean shape here. This need to look as clean as possible. If 
fresh, clean. Finish it before it's all dry. Okay. I'm actually going to spray a little bit. Keep it alive a little bit longer. But still, don't fiddle with it too much. Okay, I'm leaving some I'm leaving some highlight on purpose. I want to keep a little bit of those the dental stuff that I did. Okay. If I feel everything ends can look pretty dead, so you definitely want to keep a little bit of that. Okay, watch for the umbrella. There we go, light and dark. Get this darkened. Right. Okay, good stuff. While it is still wet, we got a little bit of window to play with it and this is the part I'm going to make some very dry and dark mixture and we uh, can do something like this. Here we go. Look at that. Some beautiful stuff going on here. Wet on too wet. So it kind of feels like, oh, there's some windows there, but uh, it's not. It's kind of lost and found suggestive details. Okay, be sure it's dried enough and use the tip of your brush to just kind of drop the pigment in and let it do this work for you. Okay, a little drop here, a little drop there, and, and those are magical. Okay, here are some windows in the shadow. kind of there, it's kind of not there. Really fun thing to do here. Okay. Sorry, I see a message, but let me finish this part before I answer because I only got a little bit of time to play with it. So I want to make use of this time that I have right now. Okay, what is it? John, what weight is this paper? How do you deal with buckling and ripple from too much water? Uh, there is a little bit buckling right now. This weight, I forgot, let me see. This is a paper I use. What's the weight? 300 gram. It does have, it does buckle a little bit, especially like now I'm using quite a bit of water and just kind of keep going with it and uh, unless you really use so much water it's, it will usually after it's dry if you keep it on if you keep it on the on the block it will usually just straighten itself out for you so don't have to worry too much about that but um yeah Okay. Let me see. Um, it's just a little bit last spray here. I want to break break it up just a little bit. And I do want to add a little bit of sorry. I hit the microphone. To add a little bit of more blue here. 
Let's see if it can actually get in there. Yeah. It's a little bit more blue in there. Okay, that Okay, it's coming, it's coming along. It's coming along. Nicely, 10:13 right now. It's over an hour already. But we got a we are in a pretty good place, I feel. And uh seeing the rest of it is this figures and try to finish the foreground. here kind of like what they have in the photo but I'm just gonna subtly put that in I have no idea how it will turns out but seeing a little bit of hot color might do us good here <laughs> but for the most part I think we are we are in a good place right now The umbrella here, I think we can kind of safely Let me zoom it in a little bit so you can see. So like I let it run in a little bit because I think to have such a hard separation might not always look that good. A little bit of connection might actually be interesting. That it, I'll let this run down. And I use this to separate this two umbrella. And uh, bring this shadow over actually. And uh, let me just... water and soften that and uh, yeah let's do this two figure here time to do a little bit of figures and I'll have this figure down like this There's some figures sitting as well. So maybe I'll have one figure here, one sitting here, no one here. This one will maybe make it, maybe we'll look at his back so it's not going to all facing us. That can look kind of odd. I have one figure here. I don't know, everybody have different preference. I, I, I find arches dry a little bit too slow. But I did start off by using arches. Like, definitely find a definitely find a material that works the best for you. Right? The materials are made for us. We're not made for the materials. So if you find a material that works great for you, by all means go for it. Like I never require my student to use the same thing that I use. So everyone have different touches and stuff. Um, the only thing I usually tell them is that since I haven't tried every single material out there, it is, it is impossible for me to know if the problem comes from the material or come from the way you paint. But if you're using the same material I do, then I can kind of tell you by experience. However, you know, that by no mean, 
I'm trying to say that this is the only way to, you know, the only material that you should be using. This to be a little bit rougher. What brush, what size of brush are you using on the faces? This is number eight. I should actually change the brush. This is this brush is a little bit old. Sorry, I just moved the camera. I, you know what? I'll take this chance and just use a brand new brush about that. I think it's time. That brush, I've been using it for, I think almost half a year. Time to break the new brush. Oh, handle it like a dream. Figure here, I mean this green jacket, and then we'll just give him or her a blue jean or I think British color trouser. can never get your figure to look right. It is hard. Let me actually tell you it is hard. Um, it actually did took me quite a while and I still don't consider my figure that good looking, but I think one of the way to really improve on that is to just sketch, sketch figures, sketch with, you know, pencil, paper, pencil, paper, and pen, um, whatever. To, no, I think it's really important to to do sketches to capture the gesture of the of the figure. I think that's the one of the most important thing when it comes to painting figures is to, and especially at this scale, there's not a lot of detail you can you can play with, so it's mostly just get the proportion, get the proportion right, and then try to capture the gesture the figure like I'm trying to make this figure sort of moving and stuff but yeah I agree but um figure is not the easiest thing it's, it's never really was and for me as well so I think take some practice This is pretty much just like brushstroke now. They are a really small part of the a, re a really small part of the painting, so there's really no need to really stress that much on that. You can kind of have it loose in the shadow, anyways. Sitting here, the head, the shoulder, and the back. Okay, get the 
this guy a hair. Maybe he's wearing blue. You know, when it gets a lot of figures, it starts to get a little bit tedious as well. Neutral tint. You guys are probably looking. Yeah, it's about a distance. I'm looking at this too. I'm not. I'm not going all the way in here. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of important to slow down for these guys, but at the same time, you don't want to start to loosen the detail and start to do so much detail because it's, it's not going to look nice. It has to work with the rest of the painting. Some brush stroke, so there's some more figures in the shadow and stuff, and uh, the rest of it. I'm not sorry, I'm not going to put too much stuff, but now it does kind of look like there are people sitting there chatting, having fun. Drinking coffee and things like that. Right? Okay, so in the screenshot the chairs are some ugly plastic chair I'm going to make them more like a metal type of chair but saying that I'm really just giving some dark lines brushstroke and things like that it's not like writing stuff some legs and stuff. Okay, so. I'm kind of just doodling right now because I know they need a bunch of chairs and table legs but uh, let's take a little break and zoom in I'll see this is a little small part of the of the painting is really not that significant it's just kind of need to hint that there's stuff going on Okay, leaving a little bit of highlight here and there. And I think we are well on our way. Okay, so... Almost an hour. I mean an hour and a half. And I really need to try to wrap this up before I put you guys all to sleep. Now, likely after the live stream, I'll probably still kind of continue this on my own a little bit. I'm 
before I just calling it done. But I think for this part, I think as for the live stream, I think I did quite a bit. So here I'm just trying to paint a bunch of shadows. This will be very useful to kind of tie things together. So shadows of the buildings, the, the chair, the tables and stuff. See, once I put it in, everything kind of anchors down and you start to feel like, oh, there's, you know, there's shadows here and these chairs and stuff are sitting onto something. Okay. So, so while it looks really complicated, kind of messy looking, starting to put shadows on it, really starting to give it some sense of, um, of weight. Before I put the shadow in, everything kind of just floating. But now that I do that, I start to look a lot better. I'm also going to get rid of this halo looking stuff around them. Wow, it's really early there. Thanks for thanks for tuning in so early. Alright. I think this is also a good time for me to sort of just darken some of this a little bit more. Especially on the side here, I want a little bit more depth here. Excessive white. You can always come back later with white gouache to get some more highlight back, but you don't want a lot of needless white space there. There's a couple of things here and there, and that will be enough. All right, that's. Hurry up and finish this part in the foreground and we are very, we're good to go. So I think for, I think for this side, I am going to, like it's white in the reference image, but I'm not, I'm just going to make it darker. Okay, just so. I think it'll be just, it would just be a lot easier if I do that. So no, I can also start to lose a lot of detail in there. I think that's good. Oh, thank you guys. 
I am really enjoy doing that. But I am getting tired. And that's the thing. I think after you do a painting, you should feel tired. <laughs> um, maybe not tired physically, but definitely tired mentally because you should be constantly making decisions and uh, really try to make a good painting. So I think if you are setting out to do a good painting after you're done, you should really be feeling tired. If you're not tired, maybe you are not really thinking that much when you're painting, which is fine. I'm not saying you should, you know, like everybody's painting should always be a lot of thinking and not just going free with instinct and stuff. But if you want to make a believable painting, the music is just, um, I mean, I can, I can share his, his scope, big rise piano. I just, like to search for like relaxing music on, on YouTube and I just make a playlist and have it go on loops and things like that so like nice music to kind of help me paint like this is what I will listen to if even if I'm not doing live stream I'll just play some music and stuff while I am Some figures here, and uh, okay, let's actually have maybe this figure going coming out a little bit. Like, it's like they're all afraid of this car or something, nobody dare to step out. Let's change that. Let me actually have this figure coming out so I can just make him a little bit bigger and uh, with that I will make his head a little bit bigger as well and a little bit of white gouache and just Give it a little bit of colors here. After it's dry, I'll give him back some highlight and stuff. But yeah, that looks better. It's kind of break off that that straight shadow line, which is kind of dreadful if I just kind of keep it that way. Now we have somebody that can dare to step out a little bit. Otherwise, it's just going to be weird. Why everybody's standing behind that car? And uh, let's have okay, let's have this car kind of just doing that here. Okay. Lose that edge, and uh, I'm just gonna have this car really just kind of melts into the shadow. I'm not going to do too much here. I think just a little bit, a little hints of details can can really just do it. We really don't need that much detail for that. Might be a little bit too wet, but I'm gonna try. Just gonna. Put the headlight in here. And we have a car here, or a truck, whatever that is. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna do like a nice foreground shadow here and we hide everything together. Give it a little bit of foreground element. Otherwise, it's just gonna be all, all light here. Okay. It 
see this is how I do tests I just paint straight on it and uh, and then and then I would judge is it dark enough is it warm enough is it cold enough it looks fine we'll just do that let's give it a little bit more sophistication here so maybe I'll do something like this so maybe there's like a tower or something whatever that is but it's a little bit different than just a straight line yeah something like that Okay, I think this is looking good. I'm doing my first Inktober and find it takes a lot of mental energy. Oh yeah. Doing a painting or art takes a lot of mental energy. and uh, Especially if you're trying to do something believable again. You're doing a lot of thinking. Let me zoom in out a little bit. There we go. Some of the final touch. Let's put a little happy little birds here. Okay, just so it feels alive. Uh, maybe I'll have another one here. Let's not put too much. I think we are pretty good. I should put like a price tag here. If anybody bought it before I'm finished, I'll give like a 50% discount or something. But anyways, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm really just having fun doing this while you guys are watching. And I really appreciate you guys are here with me. I think this is definitely such a wonderful experience to be able to do some painting while there's an audience and I get to talk to you guys while I'm doing this like without making everybody feel super boring giving a little bit of tone on this umbrella here What paint brand am I using? Mostly Daniel Smith. And uh, I live in Seattle, so Daniel Smith definitely like a go-to brand for me. And uh, yeah, so far it's I you know I have a pretty good experience using them, so I don't really find the need to experience with other paints and uh, to do any change. Not gonna touch the building. No, I need to resist that. Okay. But um, what 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 else was I gonna say? Um. But I do use a little bit of different brand here and there. I have, uh, Windsor Newton for my, cerulean blue. And, I also try a little bit of Mission Gold. I'm not sure, I think it might be a Korean brand, but it has some very beautiful, intense color as well. So, yeah. see if there's anything else I should be adding which really means that I should wrap it up okay okay I think this is a little bit too light but I need to wait for this to dry 
So I'm gonna blow dry this very fast and I'll just do a glaze on top so the ground is not that white. Bear with me. Alright, nice and dry. Usually I'll just wait for wait for tomorrow or something, but uh, since we're all here, I don't want you guys to keep waiting, so I would just force it dry and force it dry and, and just kind of finish this. Okay. That feels much better. Yeah. Like I like the light, but it But this contrast kind of taking my shift away, my attention away from the building and stuff, which is really what it should be. So a little bit of glaze here will make that super white ground have a little bit more tone to it. Sing. Okay. I'm gonna call the day very very soon so anybody have some something to say or anything you want to tell me before I sign off. Okay. I am going to use a little bit of white gouache here. For a little highlight on this gentleman's shoulder. See now that it pops out in the sky too. Thank you, Kate. It is definitely a little bit challenging, actually. So, like, if you do try this, um, there will probably be some frustrations. I mean, there's some frustrations I am encountering myself. Like, there's definitely a lot of parts that I'm not, like, what am I doing here? I think overall still looks okay. Like seeing the the whole painting still holds up pretty decently. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoying that. Oh, thank you. So yeah, you can. So here's the thing. That's this is like I I treat this just like any other painting actually. Even though the the source is a, a screenshot from a video game, I still think it. There's not that much difference if somebody would take a photo of this specific place for me to paint. I'll probably still do the same thing. Right? It's about. Are you able to kind of analyze what you see and make it into a, a, a painting? Do something that's suitable for painting. So I think definitely, like I don't want to call it a lesson because it's kind of just me having fun while you joining me. But I do hope this is helpful for you guys. All right, I think I've been holding you guys long enough and this is pretty much it. I don't know if I'm gonna do any touch up, 
but I think there's already so much going on here. If I would do any touch up, it's going to be really, really minor. So thank you guys so much. I really enjoy your company. And uh, if you are new here, be sure to subscribe to my channel and sign up my mailing list. I will put the end screen there so you guys can click on it. And for the rest of you guys, thank you. I will see you guys in my next live stream. Here's the painting in the right angle. All right.